API for this great initiative and proposal for the collaboration with AFOM and RTI. This is, you know, that we are the medical physicists working in different areas in therapy, imaging, and nuclear medicine areas. The accurate and precise dose calculation is very important for the patient's benefits. So we usually in our firm region used to do the ionization dosimetry systems or luminance dosimetry system. But this is a, one thing from RTI group is providing a, one leakage and scattered detector in a one probe, which is very, very important for our area dominance work. So today we have our speaker from the RTI group, the Christiana Marano, RTI Area Sales and Application Manager Specialist. She is mainly working in the Singapore in the Diagnostic Imaging Medical Physicist. And in addition, we have our product expert for about 26 years experience. She's, he's also a medical physicist, Torin Sturason. And also we have with us, Eric Wickstrom, electrical engineer and training manager at the RTI group. He is also working in Sweden. So welcome to all from the RTI group people as well as the participants. So we should not make our time delay. So I'm giving the floor, Ms. Christina Mauno, to start your speech. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Anupama, for your introduction. And uh, to everyone who has uh, joined us today, thank you so much for being here. And uh, welcome to this uh, webinar on uh, tracking leakage and scatter in diagnostic x-ray. So um, a uh, just a few reminders before we start. So what I'm going to do is I will be turning off my video so you can focus on my presentation. I will try to um, uh, put everything together within 60 minutes and um, you can have your, um, chat uh, window open. So if you have uh, questions and answer, uh, questions that you would like to ask, uh, you can put it in the, in the chat uh, window and we will address that. Uh, my colleagues, uh, Eric and Soren are here with me. And if there are questions that they can easily address uh, when they appear on the chat window, they will address that right away. Um, if not, we will um, address those questions at the end of this uh, presentation. So yeah, without further ado, um, I hope everyone can see my screen. And um, to give you a short um, summary of what we will be covering in the 60 minute uh, webinar, this will cover um, about a little introduction about scatter, also about leakage and um, what limits are there in scatter and leakage measurements and how to conduct leakage and scatter measurements as well as um, introducing a possible um, efficient method and leakage and scatter measurements that you can adapt in, in um, doing these measurements in your um, facilities. So we, as I mentioned, we will have a Q&A if time permits at the end of this um, presentation. Before I um, proceed to um, the actual content of our presentation, let me just give you a brief introduction about the RTI group. So the RTI group uh, was founded in 1981 and it was a result of a thesis project at Yudibori Technical University in Chalmers, Sweden. And in that same year in 1981, the RTI introduced the first non-invasive KVP meter to the market. If some of you might be familiar, that first non-invasive KVP meter is called the DGX. And um, over many years, uh, there are new hardware products that have seen the light of day. And um, we have um, pride ourselves for the efficiency and reliability um, of our X-ray QA solutions. So um, what you can see here is um, the three offices of um, RTI. Um, our headquarters is located in Mondel, Sweden, and we have two satellite offices. One is in the US, in New Jersey, and another one is here in um, Singapore, where I am located. 
So as Dr. Anupama mentioned earlier, um, joining us on this webinar to help us with the Q&A later is um, our product manager, Soren, and our training manager, Eric. So um, as I mentioned earlier, um, this is a photo just to share with all of you of the first uh, non-invasive uh, uh, multimeter in the market, which is called the GX. And you, you can notice from this photo that we have improved so much over the years on, on the, what is available for us uh, with this type of multi, X-ray multimeters. And um, so later on, we have more compact models coming along. So what you can see here is the Mini X and the PMX series, um, followed by this um, Solidos. And for many years, these were the state of the art um, multimeters in the market. So um, I think you will not be surprised if um, we still see some of these um, instruments um, in some of the uh, QA kits um, in the medical physics department in different hospitals around the world. So um, as use of the solid uh, state X-ray meters grew, the demand for more versatile instruments appeared as well. And as a result, um, RDI has introduced what you might know, what some of you might know as the Barracuda. And um, this could measure up to eight parameters uh, or values simultaneously from this platform. Um, we have this red piranha, which is a more compact and versatile meter, which is um, an improvement of this um, uh, Barracuda. So, now, from this uh, red piranha, we have also um, introduced a more improved uh, version, which is now what we call the black piranha. And on this, you can uh, on this slide, you can see the different uh, different piranha models. And um, the piranha multimeters are designed for multimodality X-ray QA. But then um, if you are interested more on single modality QA, we also have the Cobia family. And um, together with our um, Ocean software, we offer a more um, efficient um, QA solution. And also to address specific measurement needs for different, different modalities, we have what we call the probes that can attach to either the cobia or the, the piranha uh, multimeters such as dose probes, um, CT probes, uh, ion chambers, light probes, and MAS meters. And as we have mentioned on our invitation for this webinar, we also have um, this uh, new probe uh, recently launched um, in RSNA 2020 that uh, for scatter and leakage measure measurements and simply called the scatter probe. So as many of you are aware, these are all um, solutions for X-ray QA. So let's just move into uh, what is X-ray QA and um, where does RTI belong in this uh, QA sector? So I just would like to take a minute here to explain what we mean when we talk about um, X-ray QA. So here are the different uh, medical X-ray uh, QA applications. So what we have here um, on one side is the diagnostic field wherein you have all these different um, imaging modalities. And this is mostly where our solutions are intended for. However, there is also um, this uh, section in the therapy um, application, wherein there is the use of the image guided um, uh, radiotherapy and uh, that portion wherein the uh, kilo voltage uh, energy is used, uh, we can also, our instruments from RTI can also be used uh, to do QA. So, and um, one of the element of the QA testing both for the diagnostic area and this therapy area is the testing for leakage and scatter. So let's just go a bit more into detail about what is leakage and what is a scatter. And we'll do that once uh, 
uh, one uh, topic at a time. Let us then um, start with leakage and let's start uh, uh, to take a closer look into leakage. Okay, so some of you, or actually I would say probably many of you are, are very familiar with this um, topics already, um, but then, okay, let me probably go through you with this as a review. So um, the um, leakage arises um, because as you know, for, 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 for um, X-ray production here in the tube, we have um, X-ray emitting in all directions from the target or the anode and not just in the direction of the primary beam. So although this tube housing is shielded, heavily shielded, I might say, some leakage radiation can still be uh, transmitted. So that's one of the things that um, we are interested to measure and make sure that um, this leakage radiation is within permissible limits. So what are the limits of um, leakage radiation? So if we look into um, the common standards, there are usually uh, two that we use as reference. Uh, we have mostly, I would say all around the world, uh, we refer to the IEC standards, but there is also the FDA um, standards that we are familiar with. Um, and if we just look into these two standards, the similarities I would say is that um, the leakage radiation should be measured from one meter from the source, from the focal spot of the tube. And um, it should be measured over a 100 square centimeter area. So what looks different in these two standards um, are the units of measurement, wherein the FDA requirements are given in 100 milli Rentgen in one hour. And the IEC standard is given in milligray, one milligray in one hour. There's also this standard that is uh, given for accessible surfaces. And um, this is uh, measured at five centimeter from accessible surface. Same for FDA and the I IEC. And then um, for the um, area of measurement that um, differs from the two standards wherein the IEC mentions 10, 10 square centimeter and the FDA mentions 100 square centimeter. Also for the limits, IEC requires 20 microgray in one hour and um, FDA require, um, is saying two milli Rentgen or 18 microgray in one hour. So if you will notice here, this is not right. It, the, the statement or the requirement mentions in one hour. And what does that mean? So that means that we have to normalize these measurements um, based on the workload. And there, are, there is uh, some computation required when we do this uh, leakage uh, measurements. So we need to normalize our measurements based on the power rating and maximum KVP of the machine. We have to refer to the set MAS and typical MAS consumption. Um, there's um, leakage technique factors that are provided by the manufacturer. But then again, um, there are exposure settings which are recommended by the uh, different regulatory bodies depending which country you are from. And then you use that to do your um, leakage evaluations. Okay, so now let us move into scatter. So what is scatter? So scatter radiation is a result of the coherent and incoherent scattering process in diagnostic radiology. So this scatter radiation arises from an exposure of an object um, which is along the path of the, of the primary beam. So that could be most of the time, of course, uh, a patient but then for purposes of QA testing, we uh, usually would use a phantom. So there are factors that affect this amount of scatter. And uh, one is the volume of the object being irradiated. So some of you might be familiar if you have a bigger patient then you have a bigger scatter. And if you have a smaller patient, you have a lower scatter. And the spectrum of the primary beam 
as well as the field size used are also uh, two more factors that affect the amount of scatter produced from an exposure. So the fluence and the quality of this um, scatter radiation have angular dependence and not, it doesn't have the same intensity in all directions. So, and um, when we look into the procedure and measuring scatter, that will make sense um, on why we are saying that um, and this, um, the fluence and the quality of this scatter radiation have an angular dependence. So we'll go back to that concept later. So this um, scatter radiation um, normally is um, of a special concern in, in fluoroscopy procedures because um, for those of you who might have seen how this um, fluoroscopy machines are used for um, vascular or surgery procedure, you normally would have um, a different, um, different people standing here next to the table. You have the doctor, you have the nurses, um, you have the anesthesiologist and radiation technologist. So that those kind of um, environments is um, heavy concern in measuring um, scatter radiation. So, so on a normal um, exposure, both the scatter and the leakage are generated. Thus, uh, this two type of um, unwanted radiation are um, an area of concern. And um, from a radiation protection and safety point of view, it might affect adjacent areas to the x-ray rooms. And to ensure that safe operations, radiation limits have been decided and they are actually similar in many markets. So if we just take a look at this um, limits, the limits are divided into um, two categories. Let's first uh, take a look at the occupational exposure. So the occupational um, exposure limits are for people who have some training in radiation safety and are normally monitored for radiation exposure. For, so for um, some of you who are in this webinar, you know that you'll, um, for, for people like you working in hospitals, you are wearing uh, what is called the personal dosimeter or the, pers uh, the badge, which could be a TLD or an OSL detector. So these people who falls under the occupational um, exposure limit have better control over accumulated exposure. Now, if we look into the public, these are uh, people who are uh, visiting patients or just passing close to an x-ray room. And normally this, uh, the public doesn't have um, records of their um, exposure. So, we, of course, we have to be better safe than sorry. So if you notice here, the public limit is a lot, lot lower as compared to the occupational limits. So for public, we have one millisievert per year, um, average over a period of five years. It may be higher for any single year, but if you average it, it should only fall to one, a lower or not, not more than one millisievert per year. For occupational exposure, we are permitted. I say we because um, I'm also a medical physicist and been wearing a badge myself when working in the hospital before. So 20 millisievert per year, um, a maximum of 50 millisievert any single year. But then again, if you average the exposure, exposure over five years, you shouldn't be exceeding 20 millisievert per year. Okay, which is just to um, put this, um, values in context, right? So let's just look into these three comparisons. So one of the uh, daily activities or one of the daily objects that we might be very familiar with, which is actually radioactive, is a banana. So a banana, which has potassium, its, it's equivalent dose is 98 nanosievert. And um, it therefore, it says that you can have 10,000 bananas per year or eat 27 bananas per day if you're just going to compare your um, radiation exposure from eating uh, a banana. For, uh, as a comparison for other occupationally exposed uh, uh, people, 
such as uh, flight attendants. The annual dose for flight attendants is 1.5 to 1.7 millisievert uh, per year. And um, for one of the um, dental like, procedures that many of us might be familiar with, that is uh, 5 to 10 um, microsievert per uh, set of dental um, exposure. Okay, so I hope that kind of gives uh, you an idea uh, on the context of um, radiation uh, limits. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, um, risk evaluation. So for, for, for risk evaluation, we are actually using um, these two um, units of measurement. First is the sievert. So sievert is a measure of the health effect of low levels of ionizing, ionizing radiation in the human body. Uh, the, the abbreviation for the unit is SV, capital S, small v, and the most familiar um, unit that we encounter in our measurements is millisievert. Um, one sievert is equal to 100 rem. Rem is Rankin equivalent man, which is an older unit of measurement. We don't really use this much anymore. And um, for area monitoring of penetrating um, radiation, for example, the medical x-ray, we use the ambient dose equivalent, which is um, denoted by H star 10, again, given in Siebert. And um, this refers to a dose to a point 10 millimeter under surface of the reference sphere. So this is basically the kind of um, calibration that is used for, um, for instruments that are used to show um, ambient equivalent, a dose equivalent. So this is used for um, energy dependent to um, radiation that have higher penetrating energies. Okay. Okay, now let's go back to um, the X-ray room. So Typically, as many of us are aware, these x-ray rooms are lead lined. So you have this lead lining on the walls and uh, you also um, see this lead glass windows, lead lined doors. And the thickness of the lead that is used for the construction, not only of, of the walls, but also of the floors and the ceilings are calculated in the design phase based on the standards. And these this, um, thicknesses is, are given in the uh, lead uh, thickness equivalent of, lead thickness equivalent. Yeah, sorry about that. So now again, when we talk about radiation protection and safety, um, these shieldings on the walls, on the floor and on the ceiling would usually give a good measure of safety but there might still be uh, some radiation that penetrates to this, through this shielding. And this is where uh, the risk assessment um, comes in. So since we have different limits, if we just go back to the occupational um, and the dose at uh, the public limit, um, there are areas which are designated are, as control areas. So these are areas that are only accessible for those people who have, um, who are in the occupational category and who knows their way around um, radiation. And um, this can also be, um, now then we consider how about for other areas that are not designated our control as control areas, the corridor, changing room, uh, parking lot, which is outside. How do we estimate the time that um, persons occupying these other spaces um, can be when we, when we talk about risk assessment? So there is one way, and that is through what we call the occupancy factor. So occupancy factor is defined as the fraction, fraction of an eight hour day, which is 2000 hours per year, for which a particular area may be occupied by a single individual who is there the longest. So as you can notice here, of course, for the control area, we can see that um, T 
where the occupancy factor is equal to one. Similar, for example, for a changing area and for the office where is usually always um, occupied. And then for the rest, um, for example, if we talk about the corridor, occupancy factor falls to just one fifth of the of fraction of an eight, eight hour day, lower for, let's say, for example, for the parking lot, which is just uh, 40th uh, fraction of that an eight hour day um, um, occupancy. Okay. So normally over, over um, over time, very little changes are actually observed on this um, shieldings. But then some other um, points of um, interest uh, could be, for example, um, lead glass, um, the, the door jams. So it is important to measure if there are any leakage or scatter radiation in these areas. And so that's the next uh, part that we're going to discuss, measuring leakage and scatter. And we're going to start with measuring the leakage. OK, I hope you are still all with me. It is very challenging with this kind of uh, webinars when we cannot really see each other. But um, yes, please bear with me. We are now talking about the measurement part. So. So measuring leakage, how do we measure leakage? So as I mentioned before, there is um, angular dependence on this type of radiations. So typically the like, leakage radiation is measured in five directions. So you have uh, the front, the rear, you have the top, and then you have the anocyte plus the side. And the distance from the focal spot to where you measure the um, the leakage radiation should be one meter. And of course, an instrument is needed. So let's look into that. So in this example, we have the RTI scatter probe, which was recently launched at the RNSA uh, 2020. And it comes in a soft shell case. So in this uh, case, you have the scatter probe with the handle that folds out into a tripod and allows the uh, probe to stand on any suitable flat surface. And the scatter probe has two sensor areas. One is the 100 cm and another one is the 10 cm squared. And we've done this mostly to comply with the extent, uh, existing um, uh, requirements. So there is also a possibility to mount this scatter probe in any other um, tripods, such as a camera tripod, as you can see here. And yeah, so that gives you the flexibility, whether uh, you want a short tripod that we provide or a tripod that um, you have on your end. So so in preparation for the leakage measurement, so what we do is uh, we place the scatter probe at a one meter distance from the focal spot. And then the collimator here is closed. And an exposure is made using appropriate technique settings. You can see here this, uh, the exposure coming in in the display of the scatter probe. And then for the next measurement, the scatter probe is moved to the next position. Again, verify the one meter distance from the focal spot. And an exposure is done. You can see here the second exposure. And then you repeat the same for the remaining positions. So when all the measurements are collected, then we normalize this for the workload. And uh, there's an equation here that is required, but we will show that later on. And then we compare that to the limits. All right. So now let's proceed into measuring the scatter. 
Measuring scatter as compared to measuring the leakage is a little bit different. Um, in measuring scatter, to generate the scatter, we use um, a phantom. It is not good, of course, to use a real patient here. So what we use instead is a 20 centimeter tall uh, PMMA slab. If you don't have PMMA slab, we can also use uh, a water phantom that would also work. So, so what we see here, the procedure is similar to the leakage, but for scatter measurement, we open the uh, collimator. And um, another thing here is there is really no defined standard on how uh, far the sensor is to, as to the focal spot, but it, it might be good to record um, this distance to source. This, uh, so if you need it later on to calculate uh, the dose using the inverse square law, you have a good reference of the position. Okay. So an exposure is done, and then you capture the measurement here in the display. Okay. So what else can we do here? We take the scatter probe outside of the room, and then we do a measurement outside uh, in, in the control area, and then we just we see whether there's a scatter transmission between the glass. We capture the measurement here. And then we go to the other side and also check on that side as well. We do another exposure. So you can notice here that the uh, air therma is relatively lower behind the lead glass as compared to what we have measured inside of the room earlier. Okay, so if we also would need to do a sniffing around for leakage and scatter radiation, we can also hold the scatter probe like uh, what Soren is doing here. And we can use the start and stop button at the back of the probe to do that. Right. So there you have it. The instrument that we were using on those uh, two presentations that we just had for um, scattering leakage measure measurements is the scatter probe. So as it's just a little bit of a review, um, this scatter probe has two sensory areas, the 10 cm squared and the 100 cm squared to comply with the requirements. And at the back of the scatter probe, you have the start stop button. And um, you also have here LED lights that would indicate to you the intensity of the radiation. So this scatter probe actually connects with a USB cable to your laptop or to your tablet which acts as a display unit. And um, let me just uh, go through a little bit in detail. Um, how does the data from the scatter probe is presented in um, the software that comes along with it, which is called the Ocean software. It is a Windows-based software, and um, it, use, it is your um, interface that would guide you and will, give you, will prompt you for action when a selection is needed. So, before you start with your measurement, at least two decisions need to be made. The first choice is that, are you going to measure air karma rate or are you going to measure ambient dose equivalent rate or mean energy? So what are the different differences? Um, in ambient dose equivalent, the unit you get is the sievert, which is often used for um, scatter measurements. Um, air karma rate, you would usually get your measurements um, in milligray or milliremkin, which is measurement for leakage. And then if we go, we select, if we select mean energy, then um, that means that we are um, showing the mean energy in KeV of the um, scattered um, spectrum, as well as the HPL is presented as well. 
So just take note that the mean energy KEV is the accelerated voltage. It's different from the KVP, which is the kilo voltage peak that you would usually see in the control console of the machine. Okay, so as I said, that's the first decision that you would have to make. The second decision that you would have to make or the second choice is the choice between the size of the detector that you will be using. Will it be the 10 cm squared or will it be the larger detector, which is the um, 100 cm squared? All right. Okay, so let's just have um, a look into the main view, uh, which we call the the quick check. So on this quick check, you have the display of your measurements. Uh, first, you have the grid where you have um, all your parameters displayed. Um, and then, you, sorry, this is your grid. And then you have here the uh, waveform displayed as well for each of the measurement um, that you select here. Once you have collected several measurements, you can toggle and click and it will show you the different waveforms for each measurement. So if you take a look in this um, measured values, there are some extremely low doses. For example, the 4.135 nanogray, for which the scatter probe can still um, provide a very, very well-defined waveform and a steady measurement. So if you just calculate that back, this nanogray, over uh, this measurement time that is just eight nanogray per second. So it could be interesting to look at based on the risk assessment that we're talking about. All right, so earlier we also uh, mentioned about the sniffing around for hot spots, And what we used um, to sniff around is what we call the free run mode. And the free run mode um, can be um, done using the by clicking the start or stop button at the back of the scatter probe, or you can also um, use this button here on the right of the display. Okay. All right, so a similar situation here is shown for ambient dose equivalence only with um, other um, units, measurement units. Okay, so. It's uh, very interesting to note that um, different level of radiations can be picked up. But um, what is also very um, interesting to see is that um, in this uh, display software, you can also capture all the um, very low level radiations in your measurements. So that just um, shows the sensitivity of the instrument that you're using. Okay. Yep. So then let's talk a little bit more on how we use this um, software, so which is what we call the ocean. So there is a possibility to do more than just uh, using the software as a display. So with this um, ocean software, we have um, templates provided. And how do we um, access the templates? So when we're making a new measurement, in the case, for example, we want new leakage measurement, we select uh, new measurement, and then we can choose among uh, already designed templates for you. For example, here we select the leakage um, template. And um, what we capture here, let's say, for example, um, we have the scatter probe. Uh, connected to the to the um, laptop or to the tablet, and we see this um, green button, which means we are ready to take measurements. So the um, exposure time and the exposure at the detector is collected, and then after this exposure, the uh, scatter probe will populate these uh, measurements in the template, and the rest are calcul calculated depending on the preset formula. Like for example, here, the reference um, distance to the source is uh, 200 um, centimeters. And um, the formula is actually able to give, using inverse square law, the actual exposures at reference distance, uh, which is one meter. So you have here 22.41 microgray. 
and the the template will also automatically um, calculate for you the maximum exposure in one R uh, based on maximum content continuous MA. Um, there is also normalization for those in one hour given in milligrade. And also you have here um, the um, comparison based on the limit. So we mentioned earlier that you have to take leakage measurements on several locations. So we just go on through that. Up, we see a fail. Why could that be? We'll go back to that. Okay. So one of the reasons there could be a fail here is because we didn't account for the actual distance from the detector to the source, which is actually 75 a centimeter instead of 200 centimeters. So if we just make sure that we are using the actual information on the template, we can correct that and then um, the fail disappears. So we have um, the analysis um, displayed here. So the leakage compliant test is fast and the result is fast. So there's a possibility right away of um, converting these values and analysis into a report. And this is just a quick glimpse of what can be done. So in this report, what you have here is uh, leakage distance uh, compensated. You have all the measurements you took, um, the detail of the test date, um, the summary of the test. And you can also have here the data with the serial number of the detector that was used. Yeah. All right. So. In summary, um, we're now coming to an end of this presentation, and I hope um, we were able to share with you um, a good review of the scattering leakage measurements and how could, that could be done and a possible um, new instrument to measure scattering leakage. And just before we um, end this presentation, just a few notes uh, that we would like to, for you to remember. Uh, the scattering leakage measurements, uh, they need to be normalized to workload, occupancy, and distance. So both the leakage and scatter are low, very low level radiations, and thus it needs um, some very sensitive detector to do the job. So for what we have here, um, the scatter probe from RTI, um, this scatter probe has a very high sensitivity and it can measure uh, and detect very weak radiation. And since this is of solid state technology, uh, there's no need uh, to compensate for um, environmental um, conditions such as the temperature, temperature or pressure. So that this is really very um, easy to configure and set up. As you also noticed earlier, it comes in a compact and easy to carry kit. So you can carry it with you um, anywhere. Um, it is also very easy to mount um, with, its, with the industry uh, standard thread here. Um, you can have versatile setup. You can use the tripod that it is provided with or connect it to a camera tripod. And with this easy mounting um, options, um, you don't have um, the risk to expose yourself when making the measurements. You can just leave it there with the tripod and go outside of the x-ray room. And um, last but not the least, of course, uh, we have the software that is available to um, hopefully help improve efficiency, save you some time and help you improve traceability for your measurements. And for that, um, that concludes our um, tracking and um, scatter and leakage presentations. Um, thank you very much for your attention. And uh, we are open now for question and answers. Um, for any one of you who are sh uh, shy to raise your questions uh, during this uh, webinar, you can always um, contact me. Uh, this here is my email address, or you can also reach out to our um, local partners within your country, and you can find them um, in the RTI website. Um, another thing that I would like to mention is that um, many of you are looking into, uh, we get some inquiries about uh, being able to get uh, more training about our RTI instruments. You can actually go through our website 
and uh, go through RBI Academy where in, um, basic trainings are available. And you can also get um, certificates from um, those trainings that we have online. So with that, um, now we are um, ready for Q&A. Um, I think we have a few questions that, um, that came in during this uh, uh, presentation. So what I'm, let me just make sure that I unmute the panelists so we can actually um, address the questions. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Krishina. Is it hearing? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, we can hear thank you. Thank you, Krishina. So for a nice presentations and it shows very clearly how it works with the basic things of the leakage and scatters and what is the difference and we can. This is a very useful things and these meetings will is recorded and it will be given uh in after the meeting as well as in the AFM website so we are now i'm uh going to the mr soren uh Stuart Rayson and eric will start for answering the questions one question as already we have that what is the difference between scatter probe and survey meter and and there are some these what are the disadvantages of the scatter probes and uh, just to uh, recall the unit of leakage of the this and scatter and are they the same so i'm just giving the floor to the soren and mr arik to answer the questions thank you hello are you hearing hello mr soren christina are you hearing Yes. Yes, I'm hearing now. I can unmute myself too. Okay. okay. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, and thank you, Christina, for a great uh, presentation. Uh, I'm starting uh, by answering the question about the difference by a survey meter and a an scatter meter or scatter probe. Uh, historically, the wording survey has been meant to be. Uh, or, or uh, meant to be a meter to measure the environmental radiation, like survey, uh, um, sniffing for radiation, like uh, uh, radioactive dust, uh, natural background, etc. Uh, a scatter probe or scatter meter is intended for you to measure on artificial radiation, like medical x-ray, where you have control over when and how the radiation is generated. Basically, when it comes to measure or to, to the meter, a, a survey meter has to be, has a very stable zero line where it measures directly. When started, it, it should measure whatever, whatever radiation is detected. Uh, a scatter meter can be much more accurate for mesh for, for, for radiation that is generated by a generator by means of being able to reset and thereby uh, don't measure the natural background or other uh, radioactive dust in the nearby environment that is sealed out so that you measure only what comes from the, the X-ray tube or from, from the room where you want to measure. So that is the main difference between a scatter detector and a survey meter. Recently, last 10 years, some companies has come to call even uh, scatter meters or scatter detectors for survey meters. Uh, so in that sense, you could also say that there is no difference between a survey meter and a scatter meter from a few uh, manufacturers because they have used the survey the, the wording survey meter also for wrongly for scatter meters as well. So what we mean with a scatter probe is something that measures the added radiation that comes from an artificial source. I hope that 
was a clear answer in, enough. It's not easy to explain uh, that. Uh, also got a question about what's the di disadvantage of a scatter probe. Uh, for the purpose of use to measure scatter in X-ray, uh, I don't know of any disadvantage at all. But if you want something that measure, measures uh, uh, radioactive sources, background uh, radioactive dust, yeah, then you need a true survey meter. Uh, but I cannot see that as a disadvantage because then you lose the advantages of using it for true scatter measurements. Um, next question here is, can you tell me again for the unit of leakage and scatter? Uh, typically for leakage and scatter, you measure that as, as air kerma or exposure, and that would be in units of the gray or Röntgen. The sievert unit is contains a risk factor that is used to, to estimate equivalent dose risk for uh, people and staff, uh, like personal dosimeters measures in sieverts. The RGI scatter probe uh, measures both uh, units, but they are not equal. It's not the same because the ambient dose equivalent is calibrated and defined to be 10 millimeters into a ICRU sphere. You could, could uh, uh, say that that is equal to 10 millimeters uh, behind the body surface into the body. Uh, that means all, that you have a dramatic difference in sensitivity for lower and higher energies. For example, in a mammography X-ray room where the energies are low, uh, you, if you measure the same air kerma or exposure in units of gray or Röntgen, uh, you will have like uh, only 20% of that numerical value uh, in terms of ambient dose equivalent in units of sieverts. Whilst if you measure in a uh, chest x-ray room uh, over 100 kVp accelerating potential on the generator, you will have uh, numerical values that are quite similar between uh, the exposure uh, in uh, measured in, in gray versus the ambient dose equivalent measured in sieverts. So the answer on next uh, answer the next question in same here. Uh, are they the same? Or are are uh, uh, sorry, a unit for leakage and scatter are the same? Yes. Uh, normally they are. By, by, by the IEC standards, the, uh, the, the American standards uh, tells to measure either gray or Röntgen. Uh, is there any difference between the dose probe and the new scatter probe uh, that refers to uh, RTI meters? We have the RTI dose probe. It's a high sensitive probe, yes, but the main intention of that probe is to measure in beam uh, and on and uh, in, uh, doses to the to, to the image receptor behind patients or before patients for, for QA. It can also be used for scatter and leakage, but the sensitivity is not near as great as the new scatter probe. Uh, when you have relatively high doses, like for scatter in the room to, to calculate uh, how much radiation protection you need in a wall, the, the dose probe can definitely be used. Uh, it will detect the radiation. You may need to use 
modes like free run mode or, or time mode. Uh, once the new scatter probe with its extremely much better sensitivity will, will, will trigger uh, uh, automatically and make it much more simple and safe to do the measurement. Um, when it comes to measure behind a barrier in, in, in the control room or so, uh, it, you will more or less only be able to say yes or no if there is radiation or not with a, with a RTI dose probe, whilst with a RTI scatter probe, you can really tell the level of the radiation because of the high sensitivity of the design. And I was just uh, jumping in here, and sorry, and this is Eric. Um, also, the, the, the most obvious difference is the size, of course, uh, where, the, where the RTI dose probe is a, has an active area of 100 square millimeters, uh, whereas the um, scatter probe has uh, um, an area of 100 square centimeters uh, and 10 square centimeters, which of course complies fully with the international standards. So on top of an ex, uh, extreme sensitivity, in the, the scatter probe also complies mechanically with uh, the, the standards for uh, international standards for leakage and scatter measurement. Yeah, thank you, Eric. Uh, next question. In measuring the leakage, should the detector be in the same height with the source? Uh, typically, uh, the manufacturer has, uh, in their uh, manuals, they define uh, a number of positions <coughs> where to measure around the, the, the tube uh, uh, based on risk management, it should be. Uh, ideally, you should, of course, measure uh, the entire sphere, but that is not really doable on one meter that, that, that I, 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 I will not even calculate uh, what area that would cover. But, but in general, you, there is defined uh, between six and eight positions to measure. And this can also be varying in, uh, in uh, national standards and national regulations. Uh, but typically, yes, it would be measured at the same height, but you should also measure in, 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 the, in other directions uh, from top, uh, not in the direct beam, of course, even if you have a blocker, uh, it doesn't make really sense to, to measure leakage uh, um, directly behind the blocker. We've also seen that from, from regulatory point of views, there may be, uh, I, I don't think it's specified where in what directions to meet, uh, to measure. But in, in some um, uh, maintenance manuals for manufacturers, uh, the X-ray machine manufacturers would suggest positions to measure. Uh, and that would be like Christina was saying in the presentation, that would be anode side, cathode side, horizontally one meter from the, from the focal spot. Um, and then uh, front, back, also horizontal from, uh, from this uh, focal spot and top. Uh, so those would be typical, typical points to, to measure uh, right. And you see that quite often from, from, uh, from manufacturers of recommended leakage measurement points. When it, when it comes to scatter, well, that depend, would depend on the room layout, uh, but um, um, the, the, the detector would be yeah, de dependent on, on the room layout. That's, that's what uh, typically what would be the case. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh... Uh, should I say something, uh, Soren? Oh, yes, of course. Sorry. So, uh, Soren and uh, Eric and Christina, many thanks because we have some questions in the chat box also. The, I because uh, but the time maintenance, well, the, I can take the last question and I will ask all the participants to write to them so you can get all your answers if you would like to have any questions. 
in the la last question they have asked that about a banana uh, because uh, the Christina shows in her presentations the radiation dose from the banana so he said are you saying that banana are also a source of radiation uh, yes this is kind of exemplifying for for, for risk management uh, food all food, more or less, has uh, is poisoned by radiation by sources, uh, it, and if like a banana, you don't think about radiation when you eat one one banana. But if you were to eat these ten thousand bananas a year, which is twenty seven a, a day, uh, you will be um, uh, uh, you will get radiation that comes close to the level of what is acceptable for, for, for the population. Uh, and this comes also into risk management when it comes come to, 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 to uh, uh, accidents in the nu nuclear power plants like Fukushima. Uh, how, how much fish, fish can you eat? You, it may not be a problem to eat fish once a week, but if you eat it, every day or twice a day, you are taking a risk and you, because you will get radiated at levels that becomes close to or above the limits decided about for, 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 for population. So, that, and that you can also convert into, okay, what about the radiation risk around the x-ray room. If when we look in the corridor, like Christina said, you have, you have made this risk man management, how long time will someone be in the corridor outside the x-ray room? It's not a, 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 the factor one. You won't be there for every exposure made uh, in the, in, 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 by the machine in that X-ray room. You would be there maybe one tenth of the time or something, something like that. So that it, it's just an, a kind of a similarity talking about risk management. Okay, thank and you. It's not, and it's not only bananas, there's all, anything you eat, any, even people emit radiation uh, at, a, at a very low level. So it's just uh, one example of something that you wouldn't think uh, emits radiation because there, it's so so very very small so very weak radiation tiny radiation but uh, so that was just to make an example that's why we had it in there okay okay thank you uh, everyone our TI group here we have our uh, president our former president uh, professor Chagle he, he has some internet problems so he can he has contact but maybe he can hear everything but he cannot talk at this moment so I'm, uh, I uh, thanks to all the participants to join this webinar in time. And of course the RTI group to have a very nice presentation and to have a quick uh, things uh, overview of the RTI Scatter Pro. So I'm just uh, giving the, you see my the slides. So it is our 16 webinar, monthly webinar will be, will be held on September 2. At the same time, it's Thursday, 7 to 8 a.m. GMT. The title is Radiomics and Radiogenomics with Artificial Intelligence for Oncology. Our speaker is from Japan, Professor Dr. Arimura Hidetaka, and moderator is Dr. Hutu Sai. And I am, again, thankful to all the audience. And of course, if you have any question, please write to them. They are very, feel free, they will ask answer all of your queries. So thank you. So we can end our seminars. Uh, thank you, Krishna. I think we can end our seminars and everyone. Okay, goodbye. Thank you so much. Until next time. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye to all.